Hello, good morning, and welcome to uh, This Week with the Communist Party. Hey, Scott, good morning. How are you? Doing well. How are you, Joe? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Welcome, everyone. And before we get uh, started, we want to invite everybody to host a watch party. Just click on the host a watch party and invite your friends. Share the socialist wealth. And good morning, revolution. I did forget that part of our- <laughs> Good morning, revolution. Yes, sir. So Scott, it's been an eventful week. The, the Senate is going to vote to uh, on what first on, uh, on witnesses, which it looks like is not going to happen yeah. uh, unless it's as 50-50 and, and Roberts breaks the tie, but who thinks he's yeah. going to do that? But you never know what's going to happen. And then the Senate is going to vote to acquit, probably. But before we get into um, the immediate politics, we want to talk a little bit about the Communist Party and the question of the month and Black History Month. You absolutely you it starts a, tomorrow. Starts um, tomorrow. February is Black History Month. Um, so uh, one kind of immediate uh, task or, or request for everybody is um, go to the CPUSA Facebook page. Pinned to the top, you'll find the announcement of. Uh, our upcoming class on February 23rd. It's a webinar led by Dr. Michael Honey, who's the author of uh, a new book called To the Promised Land, Martin Luther King and the Struggle for Economic Justice. Dr. Honey will be uh, presenting and discussing his book with us um, and register for that webinar and, and plan to participate. I think it's gonna be really good. To uh, the Promised Land. Yeah. And so that, and it ties to um, our discussion question of the month. Um, so uh, the Communist Party has always emphasized that the class struggle and the struggle against racial and national oppression, uh, they're, they're separate but intertwined with each other. They're not the same struggle, their history is different, their demands are different, but they also overlap and it's necessary to, um, uh, to, to wage both and to consider both. Uh, so our question is, how can CPUSA most effectively contribute to building unity within the working class, as well as unity between the whole working class and the movement of the African American people for equality? Yeah, that's the that's the discussion question, and we hope people will you know dig into it. Um, and uh, it's a big issue, you know. And you know, you said that, and I think you're right that both of them have to be approached, both class and and the struggle against racism, uh, to, uh, jointly together. Mm -hmm. But it's also true that you can't address one without addressing directly the other. In other words, that we can't really approach the class struggle uh, mm -hmm. adequately without uh, addressing the, the fight against racism because it has been used historically and today as a wedge, as a way to split working class people uh, uh, apart from each other. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is a really, really Im important to see that, particularly this year when we are waging such a big, big struggle against uh, the Trump administration and the Republicans in Congress and assorted right-wing nuts across the political spectrum, the political and economic spectrum, because you know they have their support in big business, you know, in finance yeah. capital, in the banks, in the insurance industry, in the health industry, and so on. Wall Street, that's who is uh, that's who that's who uh, is backing them. And, and on, the, on that question of the use of racism to, to divide the working class, weaken the working class, um, you can, uh, just lost my train of thought. Uh, you, can, um, you can see it re really, really clearly in the, all of the, the propaganda of the, of the Trump regime, all of, the, of the extreme right, um, the, the fear mongering about immigrants, about you know, the, the, the persistent lie that somehow like uh, democratic gains for, for people of color uh, take something away from, you know, from white workers. It's really, you know, it's an insidious thing. It's very insidious. And, 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 and while you're speaking about democratic rights, we have to, in the first place, emphasize voting rights. Mm -hmm. This Black History Month, voting rights are extremely important uh, because there will be 
uh, a concerted effort on the part of the right wing to suppress the vote, you know? Um, they've done it, they did it in 2016, and, they did and, it in 2018. When, when we talk about voter suppression, it's not, you know, it's not a couple cases here and there, and it's not a low key undercover thing. It's, it's massive and, and flagrant. I mean, to the extent of, of shutting down polling places in, in low income and uh, African American and other neighborhoods to, you know, voting populations that are likely to swing toward the Democratic Party, um, uh, voter ID laws that, that target racially and nationally oppressed people that cost um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of votes probably across the country. And dirty tricks. Dirty tricks. They're going to be playing dirty tricks, telling people, calling people up, telling them yeah. to go to another polling station, you know. And now the Supreme Court, I do believe the Supreme Court uh, gave approval to a, a suit which allows people, Republicans, uh, to go to voting stations to quote unquote monitor the vote, which has been used to uh, intimidate people. So this, would be, this would be separate from, from the poll watchers that, that every party is allowed to. You know what I'm trying to say? And so that is a very, very dangerous thing. There's this, this strong arming and, mm -hmm. and intimidating people, particularly in small towns, rural areas and so on and so forth. Uh, Absolutely. So that's another thing you got to watch out for. I spoke to when I was uh, in 2018 when I was when I was knocking on doors. I spoke to a um, a, a woman who was, you know, she was really disgusted by the kind of uh, the the anger and the, the hate of the of the Trump campaign. But she was afraid to go vote because she thought that 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 was going to be kind of infecting the polling place. She didn't want to get into a confrontational situation, so she was intimidated, um, even just by the, the, the kind of vehemence of the, of the campaign as a whole. Um, yes, it's, it's, uh, that, and that's happened to countless people. And so, uh, and of course, you know, Trump tried to claim that, uh, that there were so many, you know, people who weren't registered, who were voting illegally, and he set up that phony commission, if you remember. Yeah. You know, and they could never find plan. anything. Huh? And they never found anything. No, they never found anything yeah. because it's a, it's a phony issue. Yeah. It's, a fa it's fakery, you know, straight up, you know, cold-blooded fakery on their part. It's propaganda and, and the people well, have yeah. a what, what they mean What they mean to say is, instead of illegal voting, like people that we don't want to vote are voting, right? That's their, that's their the kind of underlying yeah, and that means uh, that means people of color. It means yeah. women. It means college students. You know, yeah. um, and it means working class uh, people uh, of all hues and nationalities, uh, white workers included. Particularly union members. They don't want union members to vote. You know, particularly in uh, uh, big cities, uh, industrial towns, and so on and uh, so forth. So uh, these are some of the issues that we need to highlight and celebrate uh, uh, during uh, a Black History Month. Uh, and another thing I think that we need to do is to, you know, address this issue of uh, identity politics, you know, um, and its relationship to questions of, of, of class. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we talk about it a little bit differently. We, we re re refer to the uh, issue of, of the oppression of people of color as the national question, mm -hmm. the nationality question, you know, the oppression of, of different nations and nationalities under capitalism, which becomes exacerbated in the imperialist stage of capitalism. And uh, this the, stage. Uh, the, the, the foundation really, yeah, for I think for CPUSA's theory on, on this question is Lenin's writings on the, the national question, uh, which came out of a situation um, in Russia, you know, in the, in the early part of the 20th century, where the, the czarist state was aggressively pursuing a policy called Russification, uh, meaning that the supremacy of the great Russian nationality over the many, many other uh, nations that, com that comprise that empire. Uh, something like half of the people in the Russian Empire were not members of the, were not, you know, nationally Russian, and they were barred from attending schools. They 
their, their political civil rights were limited. And um, so the, the, the idea that, that Lenin came up with was that the, the struggle of the working class against capitalism was essential for the, the liberation of humanity, but uh, there were also questions that were not directly class questions that impacted people um, who were not part of the working class. And as a condition of unity, you had to fight on those as well. The Jewish question was one of the big ones. Um, yes, that's true. But actually, um, the idea goes back to Marx and, uh, and uh, Engels, you know, who put forward the idea that no nation can be free that oppresses other nations. You know, that was, that was Marx. Um, and he lived in the United Kingdom, you know, for many years. Um, and he was particularly struck by what happened uh, in Ireland and the oppression of the Irish people as a whole uh, by the uh, uh, British capitalists. And he said that at one point he thought that, um, that Ireland would become free by a uh, revolution from outside uh, in the UK. Mm -hmm. But then he changed his mind and he said because of this tremendous anti-Irish prejudice that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that he said, he concluded that, you know, uh, unless the British working class was able to rid itself of that prejudice, it would never be free. You understand? Yeah. Um, which led him when talking about the United States and the fight against slavery to put forward the idea that labor in the white skin can never be free so long as labor in the black skin is branded. So you had this interdependency this interpenetration between two different kinds of, uh, of struggles. And by the way, there's been a big debate about that in here in our country just over the last several months. In fact, it came up in, in the hearings on the Supreme, uh, 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 on Congress and the impeachment when the one of the Republican uh, defenders of Trump, one of his attorneys cited the 1619 project uh, undertaken by the New York Times, which has sought to redefine uh, the role of racism and slavery in the founding of the uh, American Republic, you know? Um, and they, they, they're arguing that you got to go back to 1619 and not only 1776 mm -hmm. to understand the centrality, the central role of racism uh, and slavery in the elaboration of the country and an understanding of a historical uh, a narrative, um, uh, which you know is a uh, big issue uh, this election, because again there will be these ongoing attempts uh, to sow division uh, amongst the voting uh, public uh, as a whole. And I think this is this is something that became very kind of acute right after Trump was elected because there was that whole moment of, of disorientation when um, there was a lot of like, who do, you know, who do we blame? What, what, what's to blame for this? And um, what began to emerge was a pattern of like class or identity politics. Like um, is, was Trump elected because, you know, uh, white people are um, deeply, um, committed to white supremacy or out of, you know, economic dis uh, the economic discontent of the working class um, to try and to try to separate those and to try to, to pose one kind of strategy against the other. The left should, you know, embrace identity politics to the, to the exclusion of uh, economic justice or the, the, the left should embrace economic justice and not worry about, and both of those are ridiculous and self-defeating. And I think that luckily is passing. I think my sense of the 2018 elections was that, you know, on the basis of, of working together in this mass democratic movement uh, against the right, against Trump, um, people are coming to see that, that you know, questions of uh, racial oppression, national oppression, oppression by, by gender, by uh, gender expression, um, it, they're, not, uh, they're not opposed to class struggle. In fact, they, as you said, they have to be waged together. Yeah, you know, first of all, 
um, let me just say straight up, I don't like the phrase identity politics. I don't know what it means. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a misnomer, you know, because basically what you're talking about is the ability of people who have been oppressed to fight that oppression, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and they do that through, we do that through an expression of our humanity, you know, of who we are. Um, and it's kind of used in a derisive, dismissive way. You know, the first time I heard it was by, you know, some of these mainly men, uh, academics, you know, um, nothing against that academics, don't get me wrong, <laughs> love you. But uh, these guys were just dismissing the struggles of African Americans and women and gay people, but just labeling them identity politics and, uh, and, and, and arguing that they somehow took you away from real class Marxist and issues. And class that's is the part of, of identity. That's yeah, that, that's, 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 that is just a bunch of, of, of baloney. Now look, it is true that um, uh, at times uh, our uh, independent movements of African-Americans or Latinos or, or, or women, there are different trends. And sometimes there are trends that move against unity um, because of their frustration with the slow pace of progress uh, and, and, and say, we want to go it alone. And, uh, and, and that's a negative, but you got to understand the source of it. And the source of it is not addressing it. I'm sorry, you were trying to get a word in edgewise. Yeah, I was going to say that, that, that class is part of identity class, if you're going to talk about identity politics, class it should be is is part of that because we 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 talk about the need for the not just um, class struggle but the the leadership, the intellectual, moral, political leadership of the working class, like emphasizing, embracing working class culture. That's that's an identity that that we have as a, right. As a class. Right, um, and the other thing is that those people most of them who were so adamantly opposed to identity politics, Trump and company were using the worst kind of identity politics, white identity, mm -hmm. racism, yep. nationalism, national chauvin chauvinism, xenophobia, uh, anti-black and anti-Mexican, anti-Puerto Rican prejudice, you know, as their starting platform, you know? And uh, so, come on, guys, give me, give me a break. We're if not going to be able to address these issues unless we confront them uh, uh, head on, and unless we put the struggle for the rights of all oppressed people at the forefront of our agenda. And Without from the perspective that, of the working class, like we, the working class has always said in, it, in, in, its, in its struggles, an injury to one is an injury to all. And that doesn't just mean economic injuries. If there, if there is a tax directed at um, some section of our class on the basis of its uh, of race, of um, nationality, of, of gender, whatever, those those weaken the whole class. Right? They have to be considered as, you know, as as injuries to all of us and fought accordingly. You know, there was a good guy. Uh, who wrote us a comment uh, recently uh, in which he was arguing that, you know, it's time for us to put class struggle at the forefront and get away from liberal uh, reforms uh, motivated by identity politics. And so when I read that, I thought about, well, what liberal reforms, my brother, are you talking about? Are you talking about the fight for voting rights? Mm -hmm. Health care? Is that an issue? How about reform of the police departments? You know, the issue of p prison abolition or the or or um, civilian control of the police is is that a liberal re reform that you're referring to? Uh, or having uh, uh, people, a student getting rid of student debt, that you mm -hmm. know, or uh, the issue of housing, because if we don't address directly, get involved in all of those issues in the here and now. You're never going to be able to unite the class and get to working class socialism because all of those, hello, are working class issues, you know? Yeah. So the fact of the matter uh, is that 
You're right, Scott. A lot of people are beginning to realize that. They're coming to it from different angles. Women, white women are realizing it, you know. We saw that in the midterm elections, you know. We saw it two years before that in the huge marches against Trump led by the women's movement. And I predict that we're gonna see it again on election day uh, this year uh, when a huge number of people turn out to defeat the uh, Trump agenda. Well, we're gonna have to wrap up pretty soon, Scott. Uh, anything that we wanna say about articles that have been published on the website or uh, upcoming yeah. um, issues? Uh, check out, um, we, the Communist Party released a statement um, condemning the Trump Netanyahu um, so-called peace plan for yes. Israel and Palestine, uh, yes. which is, which was created without the input of Palestine. Um, the imprint of, of, of Trump's uh, kind of uh, white supremacy, disdain for democracy um, is, is all over it. Um, it's not a peace plan, it's a, it's a plan for forcible pacification. Um, we also had another statement on, on anti-Semitism that yeah. was recently put up, uh, really important to, to fight against that and to fight for uh, you know, the unity of, of all people of our country, whether they be Jewish, Muslim, Christian, atheist, Buddhist, animist, whatever your faith or lack of faith uh, is. Uh, we can't allow prejudice to enter into the, uh, our uh, ranks. And then there's a new Marxist IQ. We got one on Dr. King and one on healthcare nice. uh, and a lot of other good stuff. So just go to uh, cpusa.org uh, and uh, check it out. Uh, circulate our memes on our Facebook page. Uh, and again, you know, please click, hit a watch party, share this, uh, stream with your uh, friends and we will be back next week scott next friday Absolutely. same time same station so <laughs> have a good week any parting shots uh, uh no i got nothing all right take care bye-bye see you later that did it <sighs> okay we should be done all right. Talk to you later. All right. Have a good weekend. You too. Did you stop the stream on Facebook? Yeah. That's the one in the cloud. Yeah. Oh, no, you didn't stop it on Facebook yet. Well, my camera's not on.